Well, hello everybody. I'm Darina. In case you don't know me, welcome to my kitchen. This is it. And um, a lot of you know me because I have a lot of loyal fans, which I so, so appreciate. Yesterday I just said one jar to everybody. I had so many comments and so many little, you know, likes and things. I know you don't, you don't live your life for likes. I surely don't. I live my life more for, um, for you guys in person, you know, people to people. Real comments that it show me that this means something to you that I'm here. But um, I've been busy doing a lot of things. I got a lot of news coming up this year. Um, but I'm back. I kind of needed a little break. I needed my, my brain to reset. So I am back and ready to roll. Anyway, it is Thanksgiving week. And where a lot of you guys are cooking today and tomorrow for Thursday, I am not because we do Thanksgiving on Saturday because I got six kids are all over the place. I got two in California, two in New Jersey, two in the DC area. I'm in Delaware. Hey, but you know, um, regardless, there's one thing about this time of year that everybody uses a lot of, and I've done lots of videos on these before um, for different recipes, but um, I think it's a good one as a reminder um, to talk a little bit about pumpkin. Now pumpkin doesn't always come in the big orange shape that we're used to. Oftentimes it comes like <laughs> this one. You know, this is a, um, they call it a neck pumpkin or a crook neck pumpkin. If you look up crook neck squash, crook neck, you get the little yellow ones, you know, that are like yellow zucchini, but not with the little skinny neck. Um, and sometimes you'll find this too, but this is, a, they'll call it a neck squash or a crook crook pumpkin or something like that. Anyway, I call it a crook neck squash, crook neck pumpkin. Anyway, it's like butternut squash because it looks like one that just got, you know, went haywire. These are so good. This is all flesh in here that you can make awesome food with. And then the inside, <coughs> excuse me, sucker's heavy, man. Um, this is the inside of it. So I already cut up the neck and this is the bottom. So the bottom has you know, this big hole here in the middle that had the seeds, um, which of course you can toast just like pumpkin seeds. Um, and this is, you know, the neck part is actually really easy to slice and then cut the skin off. I slice it in, you know, one, two inch pieces and I just cut the skin off around the side. These are a little more tricky. I usually cut them in thin slices. I'll actually show you how I do it. Actually, let me get my little paring knife. Because I like to do a combination of cutting it in slices and then peel it. So I usually what I do is take this <laughs> juggling pumpkin slices. I take it like this and I just then peel it and it actually comes off rather easy. So you just peel it like you would peel an apple. So you can take these, you can cut, I, what I did was I cubed it. So I'm going to put this aside right now because we're not going to do that at the moment, but you can cube them and just boil them, which is what I did. And then, um, but never waste. So um, what I did was when I boiled it, I ended up with all this orange water. So I put it in this awesome yogurt container and I have orange water. You know what this is? Broth. So this is going to be part of my soup. It was in the fridge. I just wanted to show it to you. So I'm going to put it back real quick. Okay. You know, we don't waste. But anyway, or you can roast these in the oven and it gives it another flavor. You can roast them, they get nice and soft, and then you can puree them or mash them up however you want. So what I'm gonna show you here right now, move my little bit, is this is the pumpkin that I already cooked yesterday. And I then, um, actually what I did was this, well the plastic is still on, and then I, this is a, dr a strainer in a bowl. And I did, I smushed it down to get all the liquid out. You don't really have to, you can boil it, take it out of the pot and put it in the bowl, depending what you're making. Now, if you're making pie, you want it to be nice and dry. And look it, I got more water in here. So that's gonna go in the fridge also. This was in the fridge, I took it out. Now I'm gonna put the juice back in the fridge. But anyway, all right, let's see if I make the, oops, I missed, whoops. <laughs> I'll get it after, anyway. So we are gonna make right now, among other things, no, <laughs> right now I'm gonna make some pumpkin, I'm gonna call them donuts, they're basically little muffins, but I'm gonna put them in a, in a I'll show you. 
I'm gonna put them in my little pan here that you know makes them look like donuts, but they're kind of fancy, you know. So anyway, Pampered Chef, if you need any, let me know. Um, uh, woo, I'm throwing it. Did I crack my egg? No. Oops. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm just basically making muffins, but I'm making them a little fancier. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick them in the freezer. Well, some of them. We're probably going to eat some. Um, and have some for Thanksgiving in the morning or the next day. I tend to do a lot of this on the days that I have a lot of cooking to do. So this show is less about pumpkin and more about like the week of pumpkin week, you know, Thanksgiving week or any other holiday week. Anytime you have a holiday coming up, let me ask you a question. How many times are you prepping, cooking for Thanksgiving or Christmas or Easter or birthday or whatever? And then you have nothing to eat in the house besides the stuff that you're prepping for two days from now. It's kind of crazy because, you know, all of a sudden you're like, no, no, don't touch that. No, don't touch that because that's for, that's for Sunday. That's for Thursday. That's for, and all of a sudden you're like, crap, what am I making for dinner tonight? Because everything is out ready, prepped, cooking, you're, you know, don't mess up my kitchen. So what I recommend is one pot dishes. One pot dishes this week, easy peasy. So if you go even on my during this, on this page and go to the videos and hit the search button, you can look up my pasta with lentils. Pasta ki lenticchia. Okay, it's a type of a pasta fuzzle kind of thing. Literally the easiest thing in the world. Cook the beans, cook the pasta, smush it together, a little garlic, a little olive oil, a little cheese, you're done. Okay, there's some simple recipes you can do. Last night I made a, no kidding, 15 minutes pot of chili. Okay, um, I threw a little quinoa in it, let it cook down. There are things you can do to, I literally came down, I was working all day yesterday until seven o'clock last night. And my husband and Luigi, and guess what guys, you don't know this, but I have an Italian exchange student living here at my house right now, who's probably gonna walk in any minute and he's never seen me do a show. So anyway, it's kind of shy, I don't know if he'll come on camera, but anyway. Um, but you know, these guys are hungry and I'm like, ah, oh, crap, I got a high school kid in the house again and a hungry husband. So I came down real quick, had ground beef, had this, had that, threw it all in a pot. I threw in some zucchini, I threw in some peppers, I threw in, um, you know, peppers and onions, zucchini beans, ground beef, threw in a bunch of spices, threw in some quinoa to fill because I put some juice in with the tomato. I put a whole jar of tomatoes in there and oh my God, it was so good. But again, it took me no joke five minutes, 10 minutes to put it together. And then I just did a few things while it was cooking and then we were ready to eat within, within half an hour. So I'm telling you, things can be done quickly. One pot meals this week, that's all we have. So tonight, you know, we're having pasta with lentils. I do have a little chicken, I'm gonna throw that in because I'm not too rushed today because again, my Thanksgiving is Saturday, not Thursday, just because that's when the kids can come. I divided it up years ago. And you guys might all consider this too. You might consider, those of you who have families who have kids who are married and going to different places, this is a holiday, not a holy day. You know, holy days are a little different. You want to celebrate them on the day. But even though it was in Italy, we, have, we celebrate this feast on the weekend or whatever. So we can move things around. Be the one that's willing to, to move things around. So I told my kids years ago, I'm like, listen, we are gonna have Thanksgiving on Saturday, so you guys can do with the others, with the, with the other in-laws on Thursday, and then come here on Saturday. Anyway, so let's make some muffins. Oops, I forgot to get a bowl out so you get to see me with my big pile of bowls. Let's, big mixing bowl. So much better to do it by hand because you don't want it over beaten in a, in a mixer. So I'm gonna take this here. All right, we're gonna start with the dry stuff. And you know what, instead of doing two bowls, I'm gonna put the dry stuff in, I'm gonna throw the wet stuff in. Muffins, doesn't really matter. People get so, there are certain recipes, don't get me wrong, there's certain recipes that you need to do this and that in order. But things like muffins and cupcakes and crazy little things like this, it doesn't matter. At least I haven't figured out that it matters yet. So, the dry stuff. I'm doing these all whole wheat. So this is three cups of whole wheat flour, but honestly, I'm gonna see. One, I'm gonna start with two. I'm doubling this recipe. My regular recipe is usually half this, but 
you know, I like to, I like to double everything. When you can, uh, why, when you can double it, why not? Make, double throw some in the freezer. I'm putting some almond flour in here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up with four cups of dry, but let me see how much I've got of the extra stuff and then I'll finish up with the, all right, almond flour. And guess what, there's only a smidgen left in the bag, so I'm gonna finish that. There's a cup and a, cup and a smidgen. All right, let's throw that over there. Boom, okay, almond flour. Because what I want these for is some breakfast, part of breakfast over the next few days, because I don't want to stop and mess up and do breakfast. I just want to do my cooking. So if you make some things like this that will last and you throw some things in like almond flour and maybe something else that is high fiber, you know, whole wheat, more higher fiber, some protein, it will be a good quick breakfast that everybody can have and they don't got to bother you. And then it's not just a plain old carb. So let's see. You know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to throw in some chia seed. I love throwing chia seed and stuff. So I'm just going to, I'm not even going to count that. Well, what the heck? Chia seed is good for you. That's more protein. And then let's see, I put in one cup, one, two, three. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put this if I need more wet, I'll just add some. All right, so we've got three cups of whole wheat flour. We've got a cup of almond flour and a good handful or so of chia seed. Now, oh, let's throw in the other dry stuff. So we're gonna do some baking soda. Now be careful with baking soda. You never wanna, you always wanna have exact measures with baking soda. Baking powder, if it's a little over or whatever, no big deal, but baking soda's got a funny flavor. So we're putting two teaspoons of baking soda in. And I'm just gonna put in a little bit of baking powder. Oh, this is a new one, didn't realize. Boop. Okay. I'm just gonna put in one teaspoon of baking powder. I'm gonna be a little fluffy. Fluffy, fluffy. And now we're gonna do the spices. This is the fun stuff. The flavors are everything. So dry spices, first thing. I just refilled my nutmeg jar. I'm so happy about that. But actually, I'm not doing that first. I always start with cinnamon. And this is my Fresh Jack cinnamon. If you want good organic spices from a small family business who also helps feed children, Fresh Jacks, go to Dorita's Kitchen, and my, my Facebook page right here, and somewhere on there there's a link. I will repost it later. But there's a link to Fresh Jacks. Go through my link, it helps me a little. And um, get their spices, they're amazing. This is just their cinnamon. I have a whole now cabinet full of their spices. I always go a little heavier on this. Oh, that's coming out nice and heavy, fast. Okay, cinnamon. We're gonna put a little bit of allspice, which is not too far off from cinnamon. It's similar. So that's cinnamon. The one learned some Italian words. Cinnamon is canella in Italian. Um, all spice is, okay, I always get this one, semi di, semi di Jamaica. So I think it's Jamaican seeds. I don't know if, if that's where all spice comes from, but I plan on looking it up one of these times when I have some time. Ginger, which is zenzero. Ginger's good because it's anti-inflammatory. So again, these are nice and healthy. And a little bit of cloves. Chiodo di garofano. Look at that, clove. One little word, chiodo di garofo in Italian. I'm just gonna put a couple pinches of clove because clove is stronger. Oof. I'm getting spices up the nose. And then my, I love, love cinnamon, but I have this thing for nutmeg and I always buy the nut, the whole nut because I just, I don't know. It just smells so good when you're grating it. So I usually put about a half a nut I think I do that in about everything. Ah, about a half a nut. Put in as much as you want, but not too, too much. You know, a lot of these spices are very, very good for you, but in, in excess, they're actually not. So have fun looking that up. Cinnamon, even cinnamon, which is so good for you. Cinnamon's good for your, um, I think it's your, cinnamon's good for your blood sugar. Ginger's good for anti-inflammatory. So, you know, you get all kind of good stuff here. All right. So let's get a spoon and mix all this spices up. Look how pretty it is, all these different colors. 
the browns and the little flecks of the spices and the chia seed. Okay, so we got all the dry stuff all stirred together. Now we're gonna start adding the wet stuff. So let's use my thing here. We're gonna put in about, a, so I'm double, I doubled this, so we're gonna put in about two hefty cups of the pumpkin. So this is one, and this is two. Oh, they're kind of, they're kind of overflowing. Look, there's a little more. Whoop. Okay, it's still in pieces. It's all right. It doesn't matter. It's going to break up when I start mixing this up. I don't know why I just did that right now. I got more stuff to put in here. Let's see. Okay. All right. Now, another. This is a real big tip day. So, one of the things that oftentimes happens in a regular home kitchen is we have raisins that get dried out. Has anybody ever had raisins? They kind of end up clumping together in whatever container you have them in and they get like these little beady things. It's just sugar. It's just the natural sugar that crystallizes and you take these things and they look really ugly and all that. All you do is get a little nice fresh water. I got, you know, my, out of my filtered water in the fridge and I boiled them for a couple of minutes. And look at this. I've got nice, beautiful, soft, fluffy raisins. And then I've got this really cool water, this juicy water that's like, you could use to put in your, you can use it as part of your liquid. You could save it to make a mixed drink with, a little bit of sweetened, you know, raisin water. There's a lot of things you can do with all the extra stuff that you create when you're cooking, just like the pumpkin broth. So I'm gonna take this spoon because this has holes in it. I'm gonna, oops, there was, you know what else was in there? I had a, <laughs> I had a fig in my, my, um, in my jar. So I'm going to just, and I, so I just moistened this up too. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh man. I should have cut that up and put it in. Mmm. No. That was good. Okay. <laughs> anyway, I'm not putting raisins in yet. <laughs> I'm just sharing. All right. So we've got this. We're going to put some eggs in. So I'm going to break them one at a time. Great, now I've got fig seeds in my teeth. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, let's go back to the eggs. Okay, one egg. No, no shells. One. So we're putting four eggs in. Two. This will hold it all together. Three. And four. In the meantime, just so you all know, I'm preheating the oven right now. Actually, I think it's already preheated. To, I put mine on 375. You guys know, I, for some reason, I have this thing. I can't stand 350, but I think it's really my oven. So anyway. So we've got this here, and then we're going to put in some vanilla. What did I do with my vanilla? Vanilla. There it is. Put it, I didn't put it with the spices. Actually, this is a brand new jar. Let me see. Oh, no, it's good. Okay. I usually use the cap as a measure. I put in about two teaspoons or so. So, oh, one, two. All right. Got to have some vanilla. That enhances everything. Vanilla. This is Estrato di Vanilla. Vanilla extract. With the bourbon in it. Oh, that's the best thing. We're going to, instead of using sugar... We are going to use some honey. So I'm going to finish up this jar here. It's part liquidy and part just soft, but it's all going to melt down in the middle of this stuff anyway. This is about, I'd say, quarter, third cup of honey. You don't really need a lot of sugar in this because, number one, you don't want a lot of sugar in it. Okay. Goopy, goopy. Um... But also what we're going to do is we'll do a little, one of my tricks, which I've mentioned before when I've done similar recipes, is we're going to just sprinkle the top with a little bit of, um, dirty spoons now. We're going to sprinkle the top with just a little teeny bit of like granulated sugar. The best kind is that turbinado sugar. It's, it's brown and it's a little bit bigger and it has a nice little crunch to it. So that's really a good, um, a good sweetener to use. 
All right, and now we're gonna put in some oil, about two thirds of a cup. Now I'm using um, sunflower oil. Oh man, it's a brand new one. Hold on. Oh, there we go. All right. And that's about two thirds. So we're gonna use, you can use olive oil, you can you just don't use vegetable oil. That's bad for you. So we're gonna use some sunflower oil. As long as it's, you know, I try to buy organic when I can. This is actually organic sunflower oil from my favorite store, Trader Joe's, which is not near me, but anyway. They do usually have some pretty good oils there. All right, and pretty much this is it. We're gonna add, we're gonna stir this up first. There's a couple other little, two more ingredients we're gonna throw in. We're gonna put in a little milk, and then we're gonna put in, I'm just getting this started here, break down that honey. We're gonna put in some milk. Now I've got a whole cup here. I'm gonna start with half a cup. And we are also going to put in a couple spoonfuls of yogurt. I like yogurt, again, adds some more protein. Um, it keeps them nice and moist. So I'm, you know, I'm just doing this. It's gonna be about, I don't know, three quarters of a cup of yogurt. Sound good to you? Put this over here. Oh man, you know what? I was making myself some coffee. I could really use it right now. I made some espresso. Made myself a little warm milk. Let's see if it, okay, it's still warm. Having myself a little espressino in the afternoon right now, kind of need it. Not a whole cappuccino because a whole cappuccino is too much milk in the afternoon. Let's see. Oh, you know what's good? A little bit of cinnamon. Oop, a little much cinnamon. Okay, there we go. Mm, yogurt. Mm. I feel better already. Mm. And my little, my little cups from Puglia. Puglia, very typical here. Mm. And here, Luigi here. So we are, he's gonna see me doing a show. No, maybe not, he went upstairs. Typical high school kid. Right, let's put all the milk in. If this ends up being too, too wet, then I can always dry it out a little bit. All right, let's see here. Stir it all up. It's a nice, and you know what's nice? Because I didn't totally mash the pumpkin, there's little bits and pieces. They're pretty small. And if there's a big one, you can just go smush it because they are very soft, but it's good stuff. All right, now I love, love raisins. So we're gonna put the raisins in now. Mmm, pumpkin raisin muffins. So this is probably, I don't know, it's not a cup, let's put it that way. I'd say, oh, did you hear that squeak? Ah, might as well get them all. Now there is a good, I'd say quarter cup of liquid in there, nice and juicy. That would really make a nice cocktail. A little couple drops of that in, mmm. All right. This is perfect consistency. I think if anybody bakes, or if you're not sure, I mean, you might usually know, that's good. For a cake-ish batter, muffins, it's, you know, not too dry, but it's not, it's not liquidy. Okay. Let me taste it. I think it needs a smidge more sweetener and a smidge, maybe a pinch of salt. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna use this natural juice to sweeten it up instead of putting sugar in it. It's that sweet raisin juice. Let's see how that, you know, this is home cooking. 
let's create. We will write this recipe down exactly as it is. But, let's see, clean finger. Wow, that made a difference. You know what? Another drop. I'm gonna put that last little drop in. Oh, there's a couple of things in there. It's a little wetter now, but not so wet that it will be too much. All right, new finger, not double dipping. Yep, I think that's good. Now, anything else I wanna put in here? No, I don't think so. So, that's that. I'm going to go ahead now and oil my pans. All right, I'm putting just a little teeny bit of oil in this bowl here. And we're going to just very carefully do each of these. Make sure when you're doing these things that you get the neck in the middle. All right, should have done this first, but you know, I know you just love watching me do this stupid stuff, the simple stuff. You know, I have tried, I have, you can sit here and try using like those olive oil spritzer sprayers. I've had so many, none of them make me happy. And you know what? You waste half your stuff anyway. It works better this way. And it's good for your skin. All right, we're gonna put some in here. And if we're lucky, they'll come out in time and Luigi can test taste them later. <laughs> He's back there nodding. He's like, yes. Okay, just make sure it's nice and even all the way around. Don't be like me and make a mess. Get the, everything off the edges so you don't have burns. Okay, these are going in the oven. Then I'll show you what else we're going to do. I'm going to do some mini muffins. I love doing mini muffins because when you just need a little bite of something, it's a great little quickie snack. Not any good for Luigi to take to school this week because um, no school. Now he's out for the week and gets to cook with me. So we're just going to do a bunch of these little ones. We've got plenty of batter here. You can take this same, almost same batter, make it just a little thinner, and you've got make pancakes. And this is also another thing that you can do for holiday week is make a bunch of pancakes and use the, use the flavors of the week. The pumpkin, whatever, throw some walnuts in it. These are also really good with nuts in them. And I have some almonds and some walnuts. Okay, so let's do this. You can put a nut on top. You can, oh, that's what I forgot to do. I forgot to put, I did this last time. Hold on. I wanted to sprinkle the top with a little bit of turbinado sugar. So I'm gonna take a little teeny bit here. I love these thick granules. So, excuse me, I'm gonna to go to the oven and sprinkle my little thing in here. Sprinkle the tops with a little bit because I don't put too much sugar in it. And that will give it, boy, I made a mess here. Okay. So that gives it an extra little, that's my trick. You put a little teeny bit of sweetness on the outside and then it just enhances the flavor of the whole thing. All right, we are gonna use a little spoon because this is a little bowl. A little, not a little bowl. It's a little pan. So we're gonna just do one teaspoon in each one. Make sure you get a raisin in each one. 
All right, so these are nice and even. I'm throwing these in too. Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> let's do it again. Let's, let's sprinkle the tops. There we go. There we go. And that makes a nice little pretty glisten on top also. Oh, that smells so good. So now in the meantime, the rest of this pumpkin, um, what you can do with it is you can make some risotto, you can put it in some soup, you can cook it down. Okay, you're gonna have to use some sugar, but if you use sugar, you can make, cook it down and make some like chutney or some jam. So I've made this before and I think I have it on my Facebook page from last year or the year before. Um, I will pull it up and, and repost it right now but I'm telling you it's so good because you can use it for so many things. So you can make it with just the pumpkin and cook it down with sugar, or you can cook it down with some maple syrup or with some honey and just enough and you cook it. It's like a, it comes out almost like an apple buttery kind of thing, but lumpy. I like it more lumpy so I don't smush it out too much. Um, really yummy. You can just put it on bread out of this world. Night, and you know what's really good? A nice crusty slice of Italian bread that's toasted and then you put some of that. Oh man, is it good. It's also really good. Like I've also cooked it down with raisins in it. So kind of like what we just did in the, in the muffins and do the same thing. You know, it's good with the raisins in it. It's also good on turkey. It's good on chicken. It's like a nice little compote that you can put on anything. So it is really, really good. I'm telling you, it's really good. Just cook it down with a little bit of sweetness and some reasons. Yum. So there's a lot, a lot of things you can do. I've actually put a, a big cup full of this in my bread dough and made some pumpkin bread, just regular bread with pumpkin in it. So good. So good. So anyway, um, lots of things you can do with this vegetable. It's very versatile. It is orange. So it's got lots of good vitamins in it. You know, you can't beat that. They're too hot. They need to sit for a minute. But, okay, okay, nice golden on the bottom. Smell nice. Oh, nice and soft. Oh no, too hot. <laughs> too hot. Let me tell you something. These are so cute and they're so good. The raisins are really hot, be careful. Hmm. You know what? Not too sweet. These will be good for my dad because he's diabetic. You've got fiber because of the pumpkin and because of the grains and the chia. Mm. Oh darn, this one caramelized on the outside a little. I might have to eat it. Oh, that looks, mmm. Oh my God, that's heavenly. Mm -mm -mm. You know what? These are so good. Oh, you know what? Wait a minute, you know what? I still have half a cup of... Mm. Oh yeah. Really good with coffee. Really good. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, yeah, that's pretty banging. Okay, I can take my glasses off because I'm not reading stuff on the computer. That is so good. So, I'm going to let them sit for a minute. I have my little, um, actually, I'll show you what I use. plastic um like a you know to get stuff out of the bottom of a jar and it's good because it doesn't scratch these pans but you take these like this and they come right out look at that perfect now I want to get these on a rack rather quickly 
because you don't want them to get soggy on the bottom. See, they got, now that they're cooling off, you can feel the nice little crisp on the bottom of them. They're so good. They're so cute. Look at them, they're so cute. <laughs> I'm a dork today, but you know what? And you can see just the little teeny shimmer of the little sugar on top. So anyway, all right, everybody. Wait, you know what? Let me take the other ones out because I know you want to see them. So let me see if I can move that up. Let's see if they're ready. So I put them on the top rack for a second. Yep, look at how pretty these are. Let's see if I can get one out. Look at how cute that is. Isn't that adorable? With the little, now you know you could also put a little bit of, when you grease the pan, put a little bit of sugar on the bottom, just a smidgen so that it's on the top. But these, even so, have enough sweetness in them that they still like caramelized a little, made like a nice little shiny, crusty, you know, and then there's a little sugar on the bottom one. So that's kind of cool, but they're like little mini bunt donuts, bunt nuts. <laughs> I think I need to stop today. I'm so happy. Can I tell you guys how happy I am to be back here in my kitchen with you guys? I love you. You make my day. I am always happy after I do a show. I'm happy to share my stuff with you. You know, I spent 30 plus years, you know, figuring out how to live this life. You know, I've been married 34 years and, you know, 32 years with kids. And I feel like, you know, I got to give it back. I was, had, was blessed with so many great people in my life that taught me so many wonderful things. And, you know, this needs something else in it today. Like, you know, a little something, but I better not. <laughs> but that's good. And guess who's here right now? What's up, Louie? What's up? Okay, I'm going to do something I never, ever do. But this is a, you want a muffin? You want a muffin? Come, let's see if we can see him. Come, up, uh, here we go, good boy. Ha. I just wanna tell you guys, thank you for being here. Thank you for being the reason. Sometimes you're the reason I get up in the morning. And so I'm really, really happy to be able to do what I do for all of you. So anyway, there, like I said, there's more to come over these next days. I know we've got a holiday coming up here. Um, I may not see you till next week, but I hope you enjoyed today and all my goofiness and just know that I'm really here. This is real stuff. This is real craziness. I hope that you find some of the tips and tricks that I offer you helpful in your kitchen so that you can get your family back to the table. I'm always here ready to help you do that. So have a wonderful, wonderful week. Have a great Thanksgiving and I will see you soon. Ciao, ciao.